All right, welcome. So, tonight, first of all, thank you to Paula. Um, for those who may not remember, or remember, my name is Dr. Dejal Patel, and I'm a radiologist, and for those who don't know, radiologists normally, people think we sit in a dark room all day, but uh, we do interact with people. Um, but when Paula asked me to do this, I was like, what and how can I be inspirational or an empress of empowerment? And then I initially was like, no. Nah. And then when I said yes, I had to think about it. And I think one of the best things I can start with is that one thing in my life that has truly guided me is, I don't know if I came up with this line or I read it somewhere so I can't give credit to who it is. But the only wrong thing you can say is nothing. And that honestly has been the motto of my life. I'm probably a little different from most of the women here today on stage because I had to combine two cultures into my life. Being born in America, but still trying to live in this Indian culture. And being a child of both immigrants, they want you to live in the Indian culture, but you want to assimilate in the American culture. So breaking barriers or stepping out of the box began at a very young age. It didn't happen one day five years ago. And I think growing up, it was always one parent was like, yeah, be a stay-at-home mom. The other parent was like, you really need a career. Well, I decided initially to go and be with, I think I'm gonna get married at 22. So I pursued that a little. Found a great candidate, mega billionaire, five carat ring at 22. Who would say no? I agreed to it. My dad was going to kill me. He said, I came to this country to educate you and make something of you, and you're gonna be this. <coughs> I got a little scared. Now, you have to remember, they were already planning a wedding. They were already doing all this stuff. And I was, my dad's like, if you want to leave, you already got into med school, go to med school, and I'll take care of everything back here. So, got up and I said, I'm going to med school. Left for med school, and my mom and all the aunts and all the women were like, to my mom, your daughter's never going to get married. Who's going to marry her? You know? And my dad told me, don't worry, you'll find someone. And I did. I found someone in med school, not the mega billionaire. So, med school was there, and I think in this day and age, a lot of people think there are probably a lot of females in med school, and there are, but I decided to choose a field where only about 23% of radiologists are females, and out of that, only 13% are actually leaders. So, from day one, it was like trying to break the ground. But again, you have to remember, I came from a culture where women are kind of sometimes taught to be timid, are taught to kind of take the back seat, let the men lead. And I was a little bit like that, um, not completely. And I remember med school, residency, usually in a lot of classes, groups, I was the only female. And so I always had to use my voice. And everyone has a voice, but do you use it and is it heard? And that's what I feel that truly empowered me to go through all the challenges that I've had to go through. And I remember when I finished my residency fellowship, I entered my hospital and um, I was very fortunate. I had a great mentor and he was a male, but he believed in me and he made me vice chair right away within a year. And I was like, I can't do this. How can I be vice chair of a whole department at a trauma center? But he had faith in me. But I remember going into my first executive meeting and there were a lot of other Asian physicians there, men, men and they started speaking to me in our language and saying, oh, Betty, meaning daughter, you don't know, just go with us. Whatever we vote, you vote. And I looked at them like, uh, okay. And I let it go the first meeting. Second executive meeting came. And then I had to come back and research a little. Look at what they were discussing, what they wanted me to vote on. Came back, and the same thing, the same men. They're like, Betty, just go with us. 
you, you know, you, you don't understand, you're so young. And I said, first of all, I'm not your baby, and second of all, I do understand what's going on. And their faces just dropped. I mean, these were men that were like my dad's age, and here's this like 33-year-old woman coming in telling them what needs to be really done. They did not take it well. But let me tell you, I've worked with the same men now for 14 years, and it's a completely different environment. Again, why? Because we all look back and laugh. Like, I said, yeah, you thought, and now it's funny, is that some of them have come to me like, oh, my daughter's interested in medical school. Could you give me advice? Like, what should we do? She doesn't want to get married. My wife wants her to get married. And I'm like, Ugh. So it, it, it's, it's always been, I feel like, getting out of the box for us. And, and I've been successful at it. I've had great mentors. I've had a lot of support and a lot of faith in me. But again, I think that faith had to also come inside from you. You have to have, I think, three qualities. You want to continue learning, you want to work hard, and you want to continue how to develop leadership skills. Whether it's in your home, whether you want to be the CEO of your home, or the CEO of a hospital, or a Fortune 500 company, you need these things. And they're all at equal. So I think, for me, becoming the physician and getting into this high-powered position, supposedly, that I'm in, or I control, when I come home, I'm just still a mom and a wife and a daughter, but it made me realize that I have to find some kind of a self-worth for myself. I can't be de de defined by me being a physician, by me being just uh, a chief, a regional medical director. When I was selected to be the national medical director out of 1,200 physicians and the only female, a lot of heads were not happy. A lot of people were not. But again, I had to take that step because I had to find my own self-worth and I had to believe in myself. And I think that's what's so empowering and that's what's been so empowering to me. And on the way, I have to make jokes. Even though at times I've been called, oh, here's Princess walking into the meeting. Or here's, you know, and I'll just answer back, well, at least I'm not the dictator of Cuba, you know, and I'm a princess. So, but we all, it's, it's in humor, it's, it's nothing personal to anyone. But that's how I've had to tread, tread the waters at times in order to succeed. And I think, for me, after becoming a physician, reaching that level, in 2016, um, I was active member of our Central Florida Indian Physician Association. And the president really wanted me to get involved, so I got involved, and he said, hey, this year, you're gonna MC the gala. And our galas are like 400 people, and I was like, MC? I mean, I like to speak and all, but to MC an event like this? Well, I think for me, that was one of the hardest things I had to do when I really broke out of that box, and I found myself, because I didn't realize how much I enjoyed being on the stage. And I did that event, and then since 2016, it's just been rolling. It's been going from 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 people. <laughs> so, I think I truly, I always, you know, it's funny, just at the last gala in, um, in uh, January, um, I said to them, oh no, sorry, in November, I said to them, I know I'm a doctor, but I really want to do this as a full-time job. Doctor is just like that little hobby I have to do to support the lifestyle, but I want to be an MC full-time. So, but that's what I felt self-worth in. I felt it was something that defined me, not just that I had my responsibilities as a mother and a physician and a wife and a daughter and a friend, but this is what truly makes me happy, and I think that's how I can hit the pinnacle of my life is I have to find my true happiness. And aside from MC, my friends can attest to her in the crowd tonight that I love cooking and entertaining in my home. And those things make me happy. And that's why I think it's amazing to see these women come up today. They are empowering themselves by letting all walls down and completely surrender themselves to you. And that is the greatest achievement that they can do. So, I just want to end, um, this was a quote that I did find from um, Gloria Steinman, and I, I thought it was, it was, it was really great. Um, women are always saying that, um, women are always saying that I wish that I could do anything that men can do, but 
Shouldn't men say, I wish that I could do anything women can do? So on that note, I have the great pleasure of introducing our next three comedians. Um, we first have Jamie Abreu. Jamie decided not to turn in her stage read to Paula on time, so Paula thinks we should all shame her. <laughs> Our next comedian is Luau Hancock. She's an educator and a mom of multiple smelly teenagers. <laughs> and then finally we have Lisa Rod Davis. She is raising teenage boys, teaches middle school, and is newly navigating getting out of her comfort zone. So big round of applause to our next three comedians. And thank you again, Paula.